In this video, I wanted to talk about the double action only. Now, I'm trying to get into talking about a lot of different things, and one of the things I'm wanting to talk about is different trigger systems and talking about the reality behind it. I'm into diversity and being educated on things and giving everything a try, getting proficient at something before making a final judgment. Okay, so this is this guy's CPX2. This is a double action only pistol and it is one of my favorite concealed carry pistols, despite the reputation that it may have. Uh, and I have my own videos about that. So anyways, um, with all that said, I wanna go ahead and talk about the double action only itself, not necessarily the pistol. This is just gonna be my prop and demonstration gun. So I got a snap cap inserted. Very good to use snap caps, by the way. And you know, don't screw up your firing pins. So anyways, um, let's talk about the history of the double action only. Just, got, just kind of a brief history. Now, re older revolvers that had the spur and everything to switch to single action is not necessarily double action only. However, the idea of using it in a double action only role is something that you would actually see in uh, wartime, uh, like in World War One, even before that when double actions uh, came out, double action revolvers came out. Uh, there was uh, police training in uh, up to the 60s that were telling you to use single action, but double action only was only supposed to be used in emergencies and stuff like that. There's actually a good video by Lucky Gunner that I'm going to put down in the description below talking about double action only revolvers. Uh, I thought that was very informative, him finding out the history and sharing it with all of us, so that's really good. Also, I got an article on my blog at doitright.org. Uh, I'll put that in, the, in a, a link below, so check that out if you want uh, some more information. So. In history, the double action only has actually been used by a lot of uh, uh, pretty popular people like Jim Cirilla and stuff like that, and uh, uh, Lucky Gunner kind of goes into more detail on that, and uh, you can do your own reading on his exploits and stuff like that, but uh, people like Jerry Metchelek, he can shoot very fast with a double action only. Uh, he set a world record with it, uh, even having to reload a revolver. So anyways, it's not, really a de it's not really a detriment to your abilities, it's just a... Uh, you not sitting there and uh, spending the time that it actually takes, which is more than most other pistols. Um, it, it it's more of a you know showing the time that you're willing to dedicate to your skill and in, the increasing your skill. So, anyways, the features of the double action only are pretty simple. Double action basically means it's doing two things. Uh, it's two actions. It's cocking and uh, then releasing the hammer, so, or striker. They're striker-fired uh, pistols like the car, or even technically the Glock, per the ATF definition, because the Glock's uh, sear basically pushes the striker back and then releases it, it's cocking the striker and then releasing it. Things like the car, the sear is actually pivoting and pushing the striker back, and that's how it's doing that. Uh, with something like this, uh, you have a trigger bar that is actually, uh, you have the hammer and it's pivoting uh, the hammer by pulling underneath it. This is causing it to have a longer trigger pull. The car does not actually have a long, a, a very long trigger pull compared to this, but yes, the reset is all the way out. If you want to get something that's double action only and uh, still have a short uh, trigger pull, Walther Creed, Walther PPX, great guns. I wish they would come out with uh, compacts or something like that. It's a great design. They, they call it a pre, a, a pre cock striker. It's kind of like having a, a two-piece hammer. Um, so anyways, uh, check those pistols out. There's good videos on them. So anyways, uh, that's a feature of the double action only. That's what it does. So um, some things that you might hear people say is, uh, uh, some statements that you might hear are things like, it's inherently safer. That's twofold. There, there's a couple of reasons behind it. First thing I want to touch on is the law enforcement side of it, which does cross over into the civilian side. Law enforcement departments, uh, you'll see some uh, surplus pistols out there, SIG, double action, um, Kellerman, or DAC, D-A-K. Uh, basically, there's a lot of departments out there that want to prevent things like flinch firing, where basically you hear a bump or you sympathetically fire uh, from the flinch response, like you tense up and you fire the, fire the pistol. That's one thing they are trying to prevent from the double action only. And also, having a long trigger pull and a weighted trigger pull does tell, you know, legally, Hey, uh, it's easy to explain in court legally. Hey, this long trigger pull, it's hard to pull. I meant to pull that trigger. So it, it can, that can also apply to the uh, civilian sector. Now, policy being what it is, you know, this is, doesn't mean that the officers are untrained. It might just be to 
uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means that uh, there, it's a policy in place. It could be for any number of reasons, but it, it can look well in look good in court. Uh, not necessarily a reason to get it, but also for new shooters that might not very really be trained in how to handle themselves under stress, this might not be a bad option. You know, if you intend to pull the trigger, you, you typically want to pull the trigger, and typically you're going to be pretty close. So. Uh, you're, you're probably not going to have too much of an issue of missing, uh, so uh, which we're going to get to. Uh, but um, also the other thing is snagging, um, there, and uh, that goes into holstering or just manipulating drawing and stuff like that. Like if you're wearing a jacket, uh, you might have little uh, doohickeys hanging off, little adjustment tabs, which could get into the trigger guard and snag, uh, whether you're holstering, reholstering, or uh, just drawing. I've actually had that happen on both occasions. Uh, snagging, but it was only when dry. I always test out my garments uh, dry first. Um, some holsters can get crimped and actually set off the pistol. Uh, that happened recently with a Glock 43. Somebody was appendix carrying and uh, he holstered his gun, bent over, and the gun went off. That's because I guess the um, holster actually pushed the uh, trigger in a little bit. And then uh, even with the safety doohickey, it still uh, set it off when he bent over. Um, not sure exactly what happened or what little nitty gritty bits uh, got affected by that, but anyways. Uh, typically with this you're able to put your uh, finger on the back and feel the hammer if you were to go back. With this guy, it's got to go back a good amount before you're able to feel it. If you see here, the hammer comes back and then it's just slightly exposed just before it goes off. You can see it there, just a little bit exposed before it goes, it goes forward. If you uh, shove your finger into that indent, and you pull it, it'll get to about here, and you have about that much extra before it will actually go off, but you're going to be able to prevent it from going off as you're reholstering and stuff like that. So, uh, inherently, a double action only as long as it's hammer fired, and you can actually control that hammer and feel it before it actually goes bangy. Um, then it can inherently be safer, even if it's something like a car or uh, something like that, if it has a, a longer distance, you'll typically be able to feel that uh, snag before you actually get because uh, you would have to push with about 10 pounds or whatever the poundage is you'd have to push it with that kind of poundage before the thing goes off now if you're just shoving things into a holster and trying to holster faster than you drew then you might not feel it right but anyways with that said the next thing that people talk about is uh, you can't shoot uh, double action only fast this is actually not true it is merely the amount of time that you're willing to spend on it. However, I'm not that fast at shooting it as for someone like Jerry Mitchell or something like that, but here's the thing. I'm able to shoot it fast enough to where I my sights are right back on target exactly when I am ready and even starting to pull the trigger again if I'm trying to shoot as fast as I can. My ability to shoot with this is I'm able to shoot this about this fast. and. That's not really slow. Here's the thing, a lot of people want to be able to uh, do a mag dump of like 15 rounds in 1.3 seconds and I think that is a dubious value even in competition because you're going to be going to different stages, you're going to be going to different targets in competition and stuff like that and even in self-defense is really worthwhile to shoot 10 shots when 5 shots would suffice in the same amount of time. So say in 1.3 seconds you could unload 10 rounds. But it also, at the same time, you could unload only five rounds. Are you really getting more of an advantage? Because it takes time for someone to exsanguinate. Uh, so is it really going to help you all that much when it takes that much time for somebody to actually respond to being shot? Probably not. And also, if you're just concentrating on unloading a mag and somebody's already dropping, you're putting additional rounds, that could actually put you in legal jeopardy. So here's the thing. Shoot as fast as you can. Uh, you know, shoot accurately, and also as long as your ability to remain accountable for the actions of your target. So, as a civilian, and even as uh, officers in some cases, uh, you know, as soon as the threat's not a threat anymore, you need to stop shooting. So, anyways, with all that said, um, it's not that hard to learn the double action only. There's some techniques to that, but also some things that you're going to be doing. The length of pull and the weight is not a detriment to your ability. A lot of people, you see them trying to pull the trigger really slow and stuff like that, but a pistol is meant to be used, right? Typically, you're going to use it right when you need it, and when you need it, you're going to do it fast. 
So I don't know why people waste their time and sit there and try to feel a trigger. If you're sitting there trying to feel a trigger, then you're doing, uh, you're wasting your time doing something that you're not going to do, and you're, you're concentrating on the wrong things. That's just a fact. So, anyways, um, with all that said, the technique that I would actually recommend is. Um, uh, something that's actually going to build up strength, and strength is where you're going to basically get your skill uh, in some cases. So here's the thing, when you're actually practicing with a double action only, any kind of trigger pull, back, let's back up here. Shooting in, in, in it by its very nature is an unnatural thing. We are basically isolating our the, this finger right here from the rest of this. We are graspers and we typically don't do things that are really independent. We're using multiple fingers. It may just be two, may just be two things, uh, maybe three like chopsticks and stuff like that, but typically we're using uh, our other fingers in a coordinated way. With this, we're only using one finger and we have to prevent sympathetic movement of these other ones away, uh, other than our trigger finger. And we're also flexing these uh, these fingers as well. While this one is uh, uh, doing its work on a trigger, maybe just by movement, it has enough strength to where just general movement will set off a trigger. Regardless, that movement itself is typically going to cause sympathetic movement in these fingers or in the wrist or something like that to try to recruit more muscles to support that, um, uh, it trying to overcome weight or even distance. So typically we're doing something that is unnatural. So we have to learn that skill anyways. That's why it's so perishable. We don't use, we don't do this anywhere else in our lives except for this, except for this hobby or this job or whatever of shooting. So you have to keep up with it. That means you need to get training and then you need to practice, practice, practice and get it to be a, a lifestyle for you, really. So and with the double action only, it is the, you have the highest level of uh, basically doing this unnatural um, movement this unnatural thing because you're moving so far and typically with these things being heavier you're having to recruit more muscles that is not only going to require you to work out your forearm in order to build strength but also endurance power and stuff like that everything that you would really want to get in a good workout and to have a good you know strong body in the first place you're gonna have to do develop that and apply that in your practice and then you're going to pretty much be able to be proficient. You're going to be able to shoot pretty fast, and, you know, it, it just takes time. you got to work at it, just like any kind of workout. If you want a good-looking body, you got to work for it, right? So with this, the technique that I actually recommend that is, is quick uh, to learn is basically uh, starting from here, starting with your finger off the trigger, and then basically just pulling through, shooting as fast as you can. And tr and then as you're going, you're going to notice at first that you're going to be moving the you're going to be moving the gun. It's just inherently going to happen at first. My recommendation is to keep working on, but your focus is going to be isolating this movement. You need to concentrate on just moving this. And if it requires you to slow down a little bit, now this is what I'm talking about by slowing down a little bit. You go from here, and then you go from to here. Not much of a difference. Just enough. To where you're pulling the trigger without moving the sights so that's going to teach your finger uh, the good muscle memory but you're going to feel it in here just after about a dozen pulls if you're trying to go really fast uh, especially if you're new this distance and this uh, weight is going to cause you to build up strength here and you're going to be able to do it a lot more but my recommendation is that you adopt a, adopt a concept that's kind of foreign for a lot of people that work out. Typically you see people that want to burn out their muscles in a day and then uh, they want to do it one day and then they want to rest for two days. I would not recommend this. You should never be burnt out, uh, especially with this kind of work. If you intend to carry, why are you going to burn yourself out? Just Here's the thing. When you get to the point where you're feeling the burn in your forearm, um, my recommendation is just do a couple more reps and then rest. And then, you know, you can do it a few hours later, but as, uh, the concept is no matter how many repetitions it takes, whether it's one, two, three, or, you know, 10 or a hundred, once you start feeling that burn, just do a couple more reps and then let it rest. You don't want to burn yourself out because your, your speed and your ability to uh, shoot fast is gonna, or, or shoot accurately is going to be affected. And those are the most important things. That's how you're gonna build, you are gonna build strength like this. You don't need to do a complete burnout, but you, the next day you should not be 
tired. You should not get to the point where you're like, oh my God, this hurts so much, I don't think I can do it. That's gonna mess with your head where you're gonna be like, oh, I gotta burn myself out doing this. I don't know if I am in the mood for that today. It should always be fun. It should always be easy to do, right? That's my recommendation. And using this drill where basically you're going off the, uh, you're off the trigger and then you're just pulling the trigger as fast as you can without moving the gun, that's, that's the best training that I can think of right there. And if you want to use a shot timer, that's fine. But here's the thing. Don't get so focused around the time necessarily. It's just a stage to kind of push you a little bit and make, where you can kind of compete with yourself and just say, I want to beat that time. But don't become a shot timer queen. That's a bad thing. Concentrate on your ability to shoot fast and shoot accurately. And by the time you're right back on target, you, you've already reset under recoil and you've already got your trigger finger ready to pull the trigger again. And you can pull the trigger without moving the gun. That's my technique recommendation. And I know this has been a long drawn out video, but you know, with all that said, um, I just want to close by saying this. I, in my experience, once I got this pistol, I was kind of hooked on double action only. I'm kind of looking at a SIG 250. I really do like the double action only. I'm good with it. One of the things that it helps me do is I'm able to be aggressive on the trigger during the draw. With that distance, I'm allowed to do something I'm on, I want to do naturally when I'm going fast, and that's combined movements where I'm pushing out and getting my finger on the trigger. You want to combine movements to take less time. That's something that you're able to do with a double action only or any kind of real double action. Your first trigger pull can be on target and you don't have to wait to put your finger on the trigger until you're fully extended. You can get aggressive and get your fine tuning. By the time your shot breaks, you're already right on target. So anyways, with that, if you work on it, you'll get better at it. Don't be a trigger queen. My recommendation is don't be a trigger queen, don't be a shot timer queen. Just work on you know, logical principles, which is if you're using this for self-defense, use it like you're gonna use, practice and train with it like you're gonna be using it in self-defense. Don't be sitting there like, oh, it's so heavy, it's so heavy. If you're going slow, it's gonna be heavy. It's gonna be horrible. So my recommendation is use the gun and practice with it, practice with it and practice with it some more. So anyways, uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Go ahead and subscribe, give me a like, uh, share this so uh, with your friends, your other shooting buddies, uh, and uh, see what they think. I'm gonna put some uh, links down below. Don't forget to check those out. I appreciate you guys watching and you guys have a good one.